Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the name of Chitown388. And his question is essentially, do you need two resistors to make a voltage divider? For example, can you cut 12 volts down to 6 volts with a single resistor? Well, I'm not quite sure exactly what you're thinking, but if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, it's something that does confuse people. It confused me when I first got into electronics. So I'm going to start by explaining some fundamentals about resistance and voltage and current. And if you are advanced enough that you don't think you need that, you can skip ahead to right there. And for the rest of you, let's get started on answering that question. The problem that I see happening is when most instructors are teaching electronics and they're talking about resistors, they talk about voltage drop. So I have a resistor, I'm going to have voltage drop. And by teaching it that way, without any qualification, it gets into the student's mind that resistor equals voltage drop. So here is the fact though. Resistor alone is not equal to voltage. In fact, that is not Ohm's law. If you want voltage, you need current times resistance to equal voltage. So a resistor doesn't have a voltage drop unless there's current. So what we need to know, in fact, I'll just explain it with my famous little soda straw here. So this acts like a piece of wire and here in the ambient air pressure we have around here, we're going to have about oh, a certain amount of pressure. In America, we would say 15 pounds per square inch, 14.7 really, or one bar, or a certain number of pascals that I don't know off the top of my head because, hey, I'm in the United States and we just don't think metric, unfortunately, here. So all through here, we have the same pressure. Now, if I pinch this in the middle, does that change the pressure? No, I still have the same pressure on this side as the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpinch it. And now I'm going to blow through it. Well, there is a slight pressure gradient from one side to the other as I blow through it. There's going to be a slightly higher pressure here and a slightly lower pressure there, but not really even easy to measure. So even though I am pushing current through here, there's going to be the same pressure through the entire straw. But now I'm going to add a resistor to it by making a pinch. So think of this as a wire with a resistor. Now I've pinched it down, not completely, but still the pressure is the same here as over here, even though there's resistance in the middle because there's no current flowing through it. But now when I blow through it, the air backs up behind this pinch and I get a higher pressure on this side and a lower pressure on that side. So now I have a pressure difference. And remember, voltage is a type of pressure. It's, it's the pressure that electrons exert on each other as you put them close together. The closer you put them, the more pressure they exert. And you put more electrons together, they exert more pressure. And we call that voltage. And so it's exactly the same thing that we have going on inside the soda straw with air pressure. So once again, no resistance. I can have all the current I want. And there's essentially no pressure difference from one side to the other. I pinch it down, but have no current. There's still no pressure difference. But then I pinch and blow. I get a higher pressure where the current goes in and a lower pressure where it comes out. And a resistor acts exactly the same. So here is just a resistor out in free space. We don't know what's on one side or what's on the other. And let's say it's um, 1 million ohms. Okay, and let's say we have 10 volts, make that positive 10 volts here. What's the voltage going to be over here? Well, we don't know. We need to know how much current is flowing through there. Well, let's say there is no current flowing through there. Well, remember that voltage is just like air pressure. It's a differential. So I'm interested in the difference in the two voltages. And if there's no current, there will be no difference. So if my current is zero amps, I will have no voltage difference from one side to the other. But as soon as I put some current through there, just to be realistic here, let's make that one microamp. So one microamp through one million ohms is going to give me a difference. The voltage difference will be one volt. So one microamp, one millionth of an amp, and one million ohms so I have one millionth of an amp traveling from that way to the other, conventional current going from 
left to right, I'm going to get a higher voltage where that current enters the resistor and a lower voltage where it exits, and the difference will be one volt. What's the voltage here and what's the voltage there? I don't know because I don't have a reference, but I do know the difference is one volt. And if I pull out my trusty voltmeter and put it across there, red to the higher voltage, black to the lower voltage, it will read plus one volt. And if this is part of some other circuit, let's say I have a battery over here, Let's make another one megohm resistor here. This is going to start leading us to what we're going to talk about. And let's say this is, well, let's see, two megohms, and I want one microamp. So I'm going to get two volt battery over here. So I know that because if I have one megohm and one microamp, I get one volt. How did I know that was two volts over there? Because this is an equal resistance. This is a series circuit, so the current must be the same through both resistors. And if the current is the same and the resistance is the same, the voltage is the same. So I have one volt here and one volt there. And Kirchhoff's voltage law says that in a series circuit, the voltages across the components must add up to our battery voltage. And so one volt here plus one volt there equals two volts. So that must be a two volt battery. So anyway, what I was looking at, though, is the fact that if we don't have that current, I just broke the circuit, there's no current. Now what's going to happen? Is there going to be one volt here? No, it's going to be zero volts. Does that mean there's no voltage? No, it means that there's no difference between the two voltages between here and here. Let's put our black probe over here. That means that's going to be zero volts by definition. Zero volts is wherever we put our black probe. What's the voltage going to be here? Well, zero volts, two volt battery. This is two volts higher, so that'll read plus two volts. Now I go over to here. It says zero volts. Do I have no volts over here? No, that means the voltage is the same here as the same there. So if it's two volts here, it must be two volts here. And here's another resistor. One mega ohm, zero amps of current. Am I going to have a volt across it? No, that's going to be zero volts. No difference between here and here. I put my voltmeter there, it's going to read zero. But I put my black lead here, and put it there, I read two volts, two volts, no difference. This doesn't mean there's no voltage, it means there's no difference. So if it's two volts here, it's two volts there. And so anywhere along here, I'm going to read two volts. I go across my break here, anywhere down here, what am I going to read? If my red lead is at the same place as my black lead, I'm going to read zero volts because there's no difference between the two voltages. So I read zero down here and two volts there. Okay, so. Once again, resistance without current means there's no voltage difference across that resistor. So resistance does not necessarily equal a voltage drop. Resistance equals a voltage drop if we multiply that by our current. So I times R equals, and let's do this properly, make that a E because that's the way we should note Ohm's law. So E equals I times R. Okay, now let's get to answering that question. So a voltage divider, let's just take a quick look at what that does. Let's say I have two resistors, and we call this a voltage divider because in a series circuit, the voltage across these resistors will be shared proportionally to the resistance. So let's say we have, oh, 30 ohms here and uh, 20 ohms here for a total of 50 ohms. Just make things easy. Let's make this a 50 volt battery. Okay, so we have 50 volts here. Kirchhoff's voltage law says the voltage here and the voltage here must add up to 50. And we know that the voltage will be proportional to the resistors. So easy peasy, we have 30 volts and 20 volts. Why does the voltage match the resistance? Just because I picked 50 volts here. If I make this 100 volts, What's it going to do? It's going to double these, 60 volts and 40 volts. Now, 60 plus 40 equals 100. So that's what our voltage division does. But when we talk about voltage dividers, we tend to talk about the voltage between these two resistors because 
Where do we use voltage dividers? Well, we use them where we need a specific voltage derived from another one. I'm going to make this back to 50 volts. So now we're back to 30 volts and 20 volts. And so what's my voltage going to be at this point? Once again, we assume that our black probe is at the negative side of our battery. That's going to be zero volts because that's by definition where zero volts is. Why is that? Because the voltmeter tells you the difference between two voltages. So the difference between the black lead and the red lead, that's what it tells you. If there's no difference, the black lead is at the same place as the red lead, it tells you zero volts because there's no difference between the two voltages. So what this is saying, if I put my red lead here, I get zero volts. If I put my red lead here, I get positive 50 volts. I'm going to still have my positive 50 volts here. What am I going to have here? Well, I start with 50 and I lose 30. I'm going to have 20 volts left over. So there's my voltage divider giving me a specific voltage at a particular point. And of course, I have zero volts. Now, we're only going to use this where we have low currents because let's say I decide I'm going to move my numbers Let's say I have a circuit over here that needs 20 volts. Okay, what's that going to do to my voltage divider? Well, it depends on how much current it takes. Let's see, what do we have here? 50 volts, 30 ohms, 20 ohms. So 50 ohms, 50 volts, that means I have one amp of current. And of course, this is a series circuit. Let's get rid of this for a second series circuit so that one amp goes through here and the one amp goes through there because that current goes through every component. But now if I put something over here, now I'm changing everything. Now I have a combination series parallel circuit. What's a parallel circuit? If there's more than one path, I have a parallel circuit. What's the impedance or the resistance over here? That's going to change everything. Let's say that's 20 ohms. Just pulling that off the top of my head. Now together, what's the resistance going to be between these two? 20 ohms and 20 ohms, that's going to be what? If you have two equal resistors in parallel, the total resistance is half of either one. So now those two components are looking like a 10 ohm resistor. Let's make sure we're following that. Where did this 10 ohm resistor come from? It's a 20 ohm resistor and another 20 ohm resistor in parallel the two together are 10 ohms so when I put that other 20 ohms in parallel I now made that a 10 ohm resistor does that change everything it sure does so now we have a total of only 40 ohms across the 50 volts now I could figure this out by ohms law but voltage dividers we can do by ratios and so I have 40 going into 50 that's going to be one point five times multiply that by 10 and that's going to give us a voltage of 12.5 volts across that 10 ohm resistor so our voltage went down so if we try to use that voltage divider let's go back to our 20 ohms here and we try to go over to power a circuit it's not really going to work. Let's just once again say this is a, happens to have 20 ohms of resistance in it. We've just messed up our voltage divider. So we don't use voltage dividers that way. Where we do use it is where there's very low currents. So let's say we run this into an operational amplifier. You want to talk about low currents? Huh. Now, well, this has a very high impedance of maybe 100,000 to a million ohms. And so now we could... If we have 20 volts here, with this particular arrangement, we'll have 20 volts here. If you don't understand op amps, they come way down, but just in this particular configuration, voltage in equals voltage out. This has a very high input impedance, so we don't get any current through there. Is there any current flowing through there? Not enough to make a difference. So no current means no change in the voltage divider. And now I could operate a circuit. Well, to get one amp, I'm gonna to have to do some more stuff like put a transistor in here. Well, am I getting complicated or what?
there's our circuit. So uh, this is probably a way ahead of where some of you are, but uh, that's essentially a regulated power supply there. We could use the voltage divider to go to a circuit with a very high impedance like this, and that's not going to skew the circuit. And that's a place where we would see them. So this is essentially a linear regulator over here of powering this circuit now, and no problem getting that one amp through there. Would that work? Yeah, just like you see it there. It's pretty simple. Once we learn about transistors and op amps, there's a linear regulator that's taking 20 volts running through our circuit. That'll work. So that's the, one of the places we would use a voltage divider, but the important thing is we want very little current. Another place would be uh, small signal amplifiers where this would be biasing a transistor. I don't want to get too deep into this, but just real quickly, for those of you who understand what I'm doing, let's make that our ground here. So there is that. We would have an input over here, an output here, and this is going to take a very small amount of current, so it's not going to change that much. So there's another use for a voltage divider. So when we talk about voltage dividers like this, we're talking about supplying very, very tiny currents to other stages of a circuit, not to supply any significant amount of current. So there's voltage dividers. So now let's answer that question. Can you make that with a single resistor? Why not do this? Here's our circuit. We know it's 20 ohms. Hey, is this going to work? 30 ohms, 20 ohms. Would that work? Yeah, we just made a voltage divider with a single resistor. Because we still have the 50 volts here, we still have 50 ohms here. We're still going to have one amp of current. And we will still end up with one amp going through 30 ohms. We'll lose 30 volts. We'll still have the 20 volts right there. So that will power that circuit. So yes, I just made a voltage divider with a single resistor. Except I didn't, because what's that? It's 20 ohms of resistance. Can I tell that from a resistor? Of course, if I know what the circuit's doing, but any circuit acts essentially like a resistor. I can take a circuit no matter how complex, and especially if it doesn't change how much current it needs, I can model that as a resistor. So we use that all the time. We say, well, here's our load. It's a power supply. It's who knows what it is. We call it the load. It's whatever circuit this is giving power to. And we represent that with a resistor and call it the load. So this is, over here, our load. Whatever circuit that's running. And that will work. Except that's also a resistance. So I still have a voltage divider. So I used a single resistor to drop it down, but I knew the impedance of this particular circuit, and so it just simply became part of the voltage divider. So the answer is no, you still have two resistors in the voltage divider, even though this may be a complex circuit, it acts as if it were a resistor. So the second thing I think you might be asking is, and this is one that seems to confuse people, okay, Let's get rid of that for a second. Using 50 volts for this example, you asked about 12 volts. Can I use a single resistor to get a particular voltage here? I'll use 25 volts because that's half of that. You asked 6 volts from 12. Now, can you do that? Well, how would we choose that resistor? We would have to say, well, um, I need to lose 25 volts. Now, we know we want to lose 25 volts, so there's our voltage, and properly specified in the formulas would be E. How do I choose that resistor? Well, E equals I times R. And if you know your voltage, you divide into it. So we know what voltage we want, so we need to divide our current into that voltage to get that resistance. What's the current? Let's get this out of the way here. Well, we have to know what's out here. If there's nothing out there, well, let's not have anything out there. What do I do to get my 25 volts? Well, if there's nothing out here, an open circuit, if there's simply no connection between there and there and I want 25 volts, 
I can't get there from here because I cannot get a difference in voltage. Remember, this number is the difference between this voltage and that voltage. So we're starting with plus 50 volts, and we want to have a difference of 25. So we start with 50, we lose 25, and then down to 25 volts. I can't get that without current, as I explained before. So to get a voltage difference, we need current. So if this is zero amps, let's erase these, and let's say this is a million ohms, just because we can. Okay, million ohms, zero amps, how much voltage are we going to have between here and here? Well, Ohm's law says if we multiply one million by zero, we still have zero, which means we have no volts here. Now, once again, does that mean that there's no voltage anywhere? No, it simply means that the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. Zero volts is not an absence of voltage. It simply tells you that two voltages are the same. So if I take my voltmeter, let's put the black lead down here, 50 volts, 50 volts. Voltage is the same, therefore there is no difference. Let's put that this way. I'm going to read a difference of zero volts. So the answer is no, you can't do it with a single resistor. But once we know what's going to be out here, let's erase this. Let's say we want our plus 25 volts. And let's say we know that this is going to have a circuit that has an impedance of, let's say, 25 ohms. Let's make the numbers real easy. Well, I know I want to lose half of my voltage. Kirchhoff's voltage law says this voltage and that voltage must add up to that. So if I want 25 volts there and I want another 25 volts there, I just have to make sure that those are equal. Well, if this is 25 ohms, I just put a 25 ohm resistor here. And now uh, what's the current going to be? 25 ohms, 25 ohms, 50 volts, 50 volts, 50 ohms. It's going to be one amp of current. And I'm going to have a loss of 25 volts there. And so there is my, well, there we are again. It's a voltage divider. Is it with a single resistor? No, this acts like another resistor. So we still have two resistors in our voltage divider. So we have to have a complete circuit and we have to have two resistors of different values to get a voltage divider. I'm using, well, in this case, I'm using two equal resistors. So we have equal voltage. So we lose half our voltage here, half our voltage there and end up with 25 volts there. So the answer is no, you can't make a voltage divider with a single resistor because if you do, you still end up with a voltage divider because whatever you're supplying that voltage to acts like the second resistor of the voltage divider. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.